We greet you tonight in the name of the Lord. Grateful that we're together in the unity of the faith and unity of the spirit. We welcome all those who are on live stream also in our number. This will be our 12th exposition of the Gospel of John. We're going to be in John 1, 29 through 31. Now in this text, we're witnessing the expression of God's nature. It was revealed, the prophets told it, what this aspect, particular aspect of his nature is. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's Amos 3, 7. Now this is a divine trait. And he has been pleased to reveal it to us. And I do want to emphasize that this is a revelation of God's nature. This is how God is. When he does something, he alerts those involved with what he's doing, what he's going to do. Sometimes that's very, very particular, what he says. Now we conclude from this that God wants his people to know what he's doing. That, you should see that. And never be content to be ignorant about what God's doing. Don't be content, that, content to be that way. You probably have noted that people in their reaction, things that surprise them, they don't benefit from it very much. You very rarely will you be actually benefited by something that surprises you. You just have to think about it and see if it's not true. Sometimes in the scriptures there are people like this. Things, something happened, it took them by surprise, they didn't expect it. We'd read things like they marveled. Yeah. They marveled. Sometimes it'd say they, they were astonished. <laughs> They were astonished, and sometimes it even said they were perplexed. They, they didn't get uh, much out of it. Yeah. Others who were prepared, remember God doesn't do anything unless he first says, tells through his prophets what he's going to do. Now some people pay attention to those words and others don't. People who paid attention to them, they'd say things like, this is that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or they might say, we found him. Mm. <laughs> or they might say, this is the Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, they, these are people that were prepared. Amen. I will tell you, if you're not prepared for what the Lord's going to do, you probably will not get much out of it if you even see it. The ones who respond most favorably to Christ, for instance, are those who believe what God said about him and the record he's given of his son. Yeah. See, people that don't know what God has said about Christ, I don't care what kind of testimony you give and how strong you may think it is, it registers very, very low on the scale of impact upon the human spirit. If people don't know what God has said about Christ, they're not going to get a lot out of what you say. They might have some questions, but this now this is just the way it is. Now, if you don't, if you doubt that, you take what what happened in the Scripture and people preach. They they always preach. Peter wouldn't get up and give a personal testimony in the day of Pentecost. That's, yeah, yeah. that's not what he did. He told people what God had said about Christ and what happened. And, and there he had got a favorable response. Yeah. It seems to me that uh, 
the church should be more active in this, the modern church, and it is, in alerting people to what God has said about Christ, what God has said he going to do in Christ, what Jesus, what does Jesus do when you, quote, receive him? Few people have any idea at all. They have no idea at all what that means. Well, now we're learning John the Baptist, he's, he's going to tell people what God's going to do. He's going to tell people what the Christ is like. See, and if people like what they hear, they'll, they'll respond to it. God, and this is how you measure your own participation in the kingdom of God. This is how you measure whether you got it or whether you don't. You find out what God said he's going to do yeah. through Christ. How that like he'd write his laws on your heart. Mm -hmm. Which means they won't be adversarial to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. They won't grate against your... <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll like them when you hear them, you'll recognize they're true. Mm -hmm. He said they'll all know me. See, so if you feel as though you're gaining an acquaintance with God, this is how you know you got the real thing. Yes, Sister Barb. I was also thinking along the same lines is that preparation for what is to come is aligning yourself with God Himself. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So that whenever, whenever you see what He's doing, you're actually in agreement with it. That's and right. So you can benefit from it. Amen. Yeah. He, when Jesus came, there were some people. There were some people that were looking for redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were some people who were expecting. Yeah. Amen. There were some people are waiting for the kingdom, see? There were some people, wh why were they doing this? Because they believed what God had alerted them, what he was going to do uh -huh. through the prophets. They believed it, were waiting for it. The marvel of this is seen in the times in which John ministered. The outward circumstances were certainly not the best. The city of God was under the rule of the Romans. And the Romans had a puppet governing the place, and a puppet high priest. It didn't look like very good circumstances. The Jewish nation had become sterile, lifeless. And who had any clear memory of the last miracle that had been reported by anybody? See, this, now this, is the, this is the environment John's preaching in this yeah. kind of environment. And who'd ever heard a prophet before John? Was there someone, anybody, that had heard a prophet before John the Baptist? See, he would, this, now this is the kind of circumstance yeah. he came into when John commenced to preach. Yet I said there was some expecting, some waiting, some looking. They were the ones John ministered to. Yeah, amen. That's right. He wasn't just ministering to the populace. Mm -hmm. That's why you you want to hear John, you had to come out to hear him. You had to go you had to find out where he was and go out to go out to him because these are the kind of people he wasn't preaching to disinterested people now sometimes there were people that did Paul preached to disinterested people in Athens but in the in the mix there were some people that were interested yeah. and and uh, one of them was even a kind of a chief person there and a, one of the great women they followed they listened but that that's who I don't I don't think the average missionary has picked up on this. Yeah. I think they're too general in their preaching and teaching. They mean well, I'm not trying to impugn their motives, but knowing how God is, he doesn't do anything except he tells the prophets what he's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to me that the first people that ought to be preached to are the people who have heard the prophets. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you could mm -hmm. justify any extensive work any other way. And that's, so that's what John's doing. He's going to speak. So if you've been familiar with what God has said, you'd pick up on what John, yeah, right. John is preaching. All right, this is John 1, 29. 
231. That wasn't a complete diagnosis. I mean, there, you, you could find holes in that, I understand, but that was a general observation. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Next day, that's the next day after this group came and asked him who he was. Now there is a divergence of opinion as to when this took place. A number of uh, men that I respect, historical men, feel it was after Jesus had been baptized and after he'd been tempted in the wilderness. But I... Uh, I have trouble with that uh, with that view. I do not believe Jesus returned from his temptation to where John was baptizing. Now to begin with, the scriptures tell us that after Jesus' temptation immediately, he returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Yeah. But Beth Arbor, where John is baptizing, this was in Judea. This wasn't in Galilee. So that, to me, this doesn't, this can't mean that Jesus came back to where, to Judea, to Judea where John was baptizing. It says, He returned to the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through the region round about. So this was not in Judea where John was. To me, the answer is that the Apostle John is not providing a chrono chronological view of things here. That's what will throw you off. And sometimes the Apostles would do this. They wouldn't just give a, give a chronological account. They would they rank it by importance, no matter where it happened, when it happened. That's what I think he's doing here in John 1, 15 through 40. He's rather given the testimony of what John had to say about mm -hmm. Christ, and it may have been spread over a kind of a long period of time, given a summation of what John said about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I, it's the kind of thing that I don't, that's about the extent of what I'm going to deal with, because it doesn't justify an extended right. pursuit of things. John sees Jesus coming to him the next day. The day before this, he had said, there's one standing among you. Uh, yeah. You don't know who he is. And he said, I don't know either. So the next day, Jesus being the audience, he steps forward and he starts toward, mm -hmm. toward John. Now, some people say this is when he came forward to be baptized. I, I don't know. He does, John doesn't tell us when Jesus was baptized. He just tells us he baptized him, what happened at that time. But he doesn't give an account. Matthew, Mark, and Luke give an actual account of Jesus' baptism. But John uh, John doesn't, which tells me he's writing for a different, different reason, see? Writing for a different reason. I'm persuaded that the uh, John is not providing us a, a sequential account. He's, he's going to tell you what God said. The other d disciples told you what God said about Christ right, at the baptism. John doesn't report that. But he reports with John because John's the forerunner. So he's telling you what John said about what John said about Christ. Here's what he said. He saw him and he said, Behold! Look, look, look! The Lamb of God! Now I gather this was a moment of spiritual insight that he had. Just like when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was something that it was, he was illuminated at that point and said this. Now the expression, Lamb of God, see that's not an that's not a Old Testament expression. No prophet ever used that. Jesus was never said from Genesis to Malachi. Was never referred to 
as the Lamb of God. Yeah. Well, I know Isaiah said he was led like a lamb. That's not the same as Lamb of God. Yeah. Never was called that mm -hmm. before. So this was an illumination, illuminated right. remark. Uh -huh. Isaiah prophesied he'd be brought like a lamb to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Is John the Revelator is the person who consistently talked about Jesus as Lamb, and I give you the references in Revelation. Nobody else, nobody else referred to him as the Lamb. Uh -huh. This is the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb. It's a new thing now. The Lamb of God. What's the Lamb of God? Yeah. Now Paul's going to say something on this subject too, which takes away the sin of the world. Where? Where was that said in the prophets? I know the scripture said that the iniquities of us all were laid upon him. He made an end of sin. He finished the transgression. But nobody said he was going to take sin away. Whoever said that? What prophet said he was going to take sin away? It was seen in figures and types and shadows. Now that you know that is true, you can figure it out. But that's not, this is a revelation. This is a revelation of what was going to happen. Take away the sin of the world. Actually, the whole world, very few references are even made to the whole world from Genesis to Malachi. We do know the every man was, their imagination of the heart was evil continually. That was said about the whole world. And Job talked about the all the world one time, but this this this, this was not an Old Testament expression. All the world. <laughs> this is this is not how the language of the prophets. They'd say the earth shall be full. They do say something like that. But there was the environment. But here he's talking about people. That's right. Amen. Take take away the sin of the whole world. Singular, sin of the whole world. And that, that was not clear. Now, I understand once you know this, you can go back and figure this out in the prophets, but it was not said plainly back there. It was not said plainly. John's the first one to just come right out. The angel told Joseph, he said, he shall save his people from their sins. But that's different than take away the sin of the whole world. He was talking about Israel there, see? Sins of the whole, it's a new revelation. Without this revelation. That's right. Yeah. And he, even then you're going to have to fish. If you've got this revelation, you're going to have to fish because it's not actually said that way. Now Paul clarifies... <laughs> The closest thing you get to take away the sin of the world was the living goat that the mm -hmm. high priest confessed the sins of the people on the living goat, and then he carried them, mm -hmm. typically carried them away into a land uninhabited. Paul clarifies what is meant by Lamb of God. This is not talking about the lambs that were regularly sacrificed. This is not what he's talking about. A man bring his lamb, this was God's lamb. No. Or Isaac... God provide himself a lamb. Well, he's, this is something else. Paul tells you this is something else. Actually, the law didn't, didn't describe this lamb. This lamb was described before the law. This lamb was instituted before the law. It was the Passover lamb. That's the lamb that prefigured Christ. The Passover lamb. No other lamb prefigured Christ. That was the lamb. It prefigured him. So Paul says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, get the sinners out. Mm -hmm. That ye may be a new lump, as, Stephen, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, yeah. it's lamb. Uh -huh. Not talking about our Passover feast, he's talking about our Passover lamb. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the lamb whose blood yeah. delivered the people. Yeah, yeah, that's right. mm. uh -huh. Passover the lamb, that they. they that's the they ate that lamb. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. yes. As well as put the blood on the doorpost, they also ate that lamb. So this is the lamb. Yeah. Now what has happened in Christ has taken the Passover lamb, 
All of the sacrifices under the law, all the lambs, the goats, the heifers, the bullocks, the turtle doves, and he's wrapped them all up in one. And he calls them Lamb of God, who took away, see under the law it was a goat that took it away, it wasn't a lamb. See, so he's combining all these figures back here and say this is the Passover. Yeah. We're talking about deliverance here. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about payment here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. Although what Jesus died, it was payment. Right. That's not what we're talking about. Deliverance here. Yeah. Deliverance mm -hmm. takes a way. See, yeah. Christ's death was also a payment, mm -hmm. a ransom. But see, John is speaking about something else. He's saying, look, mm -hmm. our bondage is about to end. Amen. Yeah. We're going to be delivered. Mm -hmm. This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So far as we know, no one was ever shown this depiction of Christ before John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. It was unique to him. Afterward, apostles opened it up. The phrase is sin of the world. In this text, and sins of the whole world, 1 John 2, 2, were never mentioned prior to John the Baptist. Those phrases were never, never used. Why weren't they used? Because it wasn't time to use them yet. Now this is going to happen. So God always reveals... What he's going to do, he always reveals through the prophets. He's going to take away the sins of the world. The time has arrived, so now we're going to, now we're going to reveal. It's going to take place, take away the sins of the world. Only in Noah's day was the universal wickedness of man. A particular point was made of it, but of course their, their sins weren't washed away. They were washed away. Twice we read of the total corruption of man in Psalm 14 and, 50, and chapter 53. The book of Job contains some references about the universal nature of sin. Man drinks iniquity like water and things like this. But with a few exceptions, the prophets upbraided Israel for their sins. And once in a while they prophesy a burden against some other nation. But the whole world, see this... This is a new thing. Now is the time that this is going to be opened. Now is the time this is going to be opened up. Now we're talking about salvation for the whole world. Yeah, the yeah. sins of the whole world yeah. will be taken away. And the best you could have is if you had been tutored in the things of God, you could kind of, this would not be offensive. This wouldn't, this wouldn't throw you off. You could kind of begin to put it away. So that's what it means to end the trans, finish the transgression. Yeah. Make an end of sin. See, you could, you could kind of put it together. But it's marvelous. It's a marvelous revelation Amen. from John the Baptist. Yeah. He says, now this is he of whom I said. So Jesus approaches John the harbinger. Harbinger means forerunner. Mm -hmm. John is very careful to make clear who this is. Mm -hmm. Because he already told him, you don't know who this, you don't, there's one among you, you don't know who it is. I, all right, this, this, is, this is the one I was talking about right here, uh -huh. coming forward. He made clear he'd not been speaking of a, some distant appearance. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some people might have thought that maybe it's a way down, but see, it was an immediate appearance. John the Baptist, he, he starts ministering six months before Jesus became pub, went public. Mm -hmm. So it was a sudden appearance this is he now the working of the Lord is always focused this this is he see you talk about Christ you've got to have the this is he mm -hmm. approach you just can't talk about Christ like ambiguously That's right. he will help you he loves you but as too general you got to be more specific. This is he. This is he. When Samuel went to anoint the king, David appeared, and God said, "This is he." Did those very words. This is he. 
Jesus said of John the Baptist, he said, This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger. This is he. When speaking of Jesus, John wrote, This is he that came by water and by blood. See, so it's specific. Yeah. This is he. Now look. This is my opinion. But in my opinion, and it's a studied opinion, there is too much generality said about Jesus. It's just too general. It's not specific enough. This is he. See, it narrows down to a, to a person. Not, not a position, a person. A person. Not an institution, a person. Not a personal benefit, a person. Not a life discipline, a person. And it narrows down to a person. So if you're going to speak about Christ, don't be speaking about what he can do for them now. Tell them who he is. And what he's done. After me cometh a man. After me. That's after I... Not after I die. Uh -huh. It's after I, after I start my work, there's going to be someone else come. He came after John. He, regarding, uh, he came after John, but regarding priority, he was before John. See? Amen. His ministry followed John's, but it was the most important ministry. He was a second man, but he's the most important man. <laughs> He died long after Adam, but his was the most important death. Amen. See, the new birth is second in sequence, but it's the most important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The new covenant is referred to as the second, mm -hmm. and it's the most important, and better covenant. The church is a second God-ordained group, but it has the preeminence, yeah. golden ground of the truth. Mm -hmm. So what comes after? See, that's, that's, what, that's what you want to concentrate on. What comes after? Yeah. What comes after the first birth? There's another birth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another birth. Yeah. Now, he's, uh, he said, he's preferred before me. Mm -hmm. And that, this is the third time John said this. Mm -hmm. Verse six, 15, 27, and 30. He's preferred before me. It's the third time he said that. And apart from Christ, John, at this time, is the most important person in the entire world. In the entire world, John the Baptist, until Christ makes his showing, is the most important person in the world. Uh, there's never risen anybody greater than him up to that point. See? And he says he's preferred for, before me. He's going to carry more weight than I carry. I can't, I thought about that a lot, that at, at that time John was the most important person in the world, but he never said that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he never said, I'm the most important. He didn't say that. Yeah. But Jesus, Jesus alluded to it. Uh -huh. And it says of John, in John 10, 41, he did no miracles. You know, all through history, when God would do something, miracles would break out. Mm -hmm. Even Gideon, remember, he said, if God's, if God's for us, how come where's miracles at? Mm -hmm. And so God worked some yeah. miracles. Uh -huh. So he went down to Egypt, and God worked, uh -huh. God worked some miracles. And all through, all through Israel's history, when something started to happen, miracles. Uh -huh. But here's the greatest thing in the world. Have the greatest prophet comes in, mm -hmm. no miracles. Why not? Because it would have detracted from the message. Yes, amen. It would have drawn more attention to John than God had intended. Yeah. He did no miracle. When Jesus came, he did so many miracles you couldn't count them. Yeah. Could you say that uh, those kind of signs weren't needed because John himself was the sign? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. For Jesus to be preferred, like we say, what does that mean? He is preferred. Uh -huh. 
That's not like a philosophical statement. What it means is, he's preferred before me, is he has the priority. He's chosen above all others. There's a divine view of Jesus. And when it comes to God and you, Jesus is who God prefers. So, so whatever you think about how God cares for you and how God loves you, and this is all true, but he cares for and loves Jesus more. Yes. He's preferred. If he's preferred to John the Baptist, you ought to know he's preferred to us. Amen. He's preferred. Yes. When Jesus entered to and commenced his ministry of going about doing good and healing all repressed to the devil, he was superior. His work was superior. His words were superior. He was preferred. Yeah. As soon as he enters the picture, everything else becomes secondary. Now you know whether you got Jesus or not. Yeah. That's one way you know. Yeah. If something else has a priority, Jesus is not in you. Yeah. Oh. Someone's got to. Someone's yeah. got to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's yeah. got to say that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus does not dwell in anybody uh -huh. that makes him second. Amen. If he did, he left. Yeah, that's right. He will not take a second position. Uh -huh. He will not. That's right. See, there are people that wear the name of Christ that have assigned a secondary position to Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's a if I got time person. Uh -huh. yeah, that's right. He will not accept that. Amen. John knew it. He said he's preferred. Before me, if there's if there's if Jesus is preaching over there and I'm preaching over here, all of you should go over there. Yeah. See, that's, uh -huh. yeah. that's what it boiled down to. And he was before me. Uh -huh. Jesus said, Before Abraham was I am. So he was there isn't anybody that Jesus is not before. Yeah. In existence, uh -huh. in priority, yeah. before. He's before me. Micah said Jesus' goings were from everlasting. He'd come out of eternity, so to speak. Isaiah said he was an everlasting father. That was his name. And Jesus spoke to the father of the glory I had with thee before the world was. He, before, he's be, he was before me. So how could, my, how could what I'm doing possibly overshadow what he's doing? In priority, he's before me. In existence, he's before me. This is how we've got to think. Amen. So sometimes you will be, you'll hit an impasse in your life where you've got to make a choice. You've got to decide who you're going to serve. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Yeah, amen. And at that point, Jesus has got to be, have the priority. He's got to be preferred because he's to be preferred mm -hmm. and he's above us, before us. The before aspect of Jesus, see this isn't receiving much attention in our day. There's not a lot of talk about Jesus being preferred and before. I, I think a lot of people believe this, it's just they, they don't say it, it's not said. His humanity is rarely recognized as a humbling of himself. It's more like, I did this so I could get you. So I'd be like you and know how you feel. No, Jesus humbled himself in order to obey God and to do his will. If it wasn't for God's will, he did never come. Yeah, if you want to think about what the Lord in his eternal condition thought of us, if God hadn't sent him, he wouldn't have come. Yeah, amen. Well, let's put it this way, he didn't come right. for 4,000 years. Yeah, uh -huh. If he felt like about humanity, like people were painted, he'd have come right after the Garden of Eden. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Wouldn't he? Uh -huh. No, he'd come because of the Father. So this aspect of God's got to be a 
got to be declared. Brother Young, it would have been a good entrance if it was right before the flood. He could have showed up and saved everybody. That's right. But he didn't. <laughs> you got to get to this point where with your heart uh -huh. you can say, he is preferred to me, uh -huh. and he's before me. Yes. Amen. So now don't ask me what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the will of God. Yeah. Now then John continues. He says, I knew him not. But that he should see. Now he said, behold the Lamb of God. But he said before, before that flash of insight came to him, he, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know him. But I've come baptizing with water because... The, God revealed to me that he was going to reveal his son while I was baptizing. Uh -huh, yeah. He ended up while he was baptizing the son. Uh, that's when you were revealed too, incidentally. Amen. I knew him not. Didn't re Some verses say I didn't recognize him. So he hadn't received enough information to s put it in sync with his vision. He, not yet, he couldn't see, I, I didn't know him. It's like, it's like Abraham, he didn't know where he was going till he got on the journey. He didn't know where the mountain was, he was going to offer Isaac, he didn't know where it was till he set out for it. So John didn't know who it was till the time came for what he was going to do to be done. John, in some way, in some way, John recognized Jesus when he was in the womb. Uh -huh. yeah. Remember, when Mary greeted Elizabeth, she said, The babe leaped in my womb for joy. Yeah. He, there was some way in which that uh -huh. he knew. Yes. Here he says, I, I knew him not. That is a man who didn't know him. See, there are moments of spiritual clarity. Yes. When you go beyond nature, for instance, when Jesus, when Peter confessed who Jesus was, he said more than he knew. See? Jesus, said, who who do you say that I am? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Well, well, Peter, that uh, <laughs> you didn't learn that at one of the rabbinical schools. I'll tell you that. My Father revealed this to you, and it was a, in no time at all. Till it appears as though Peter forgot that flash of insight uh -huh. right after Jesus that occasion uh -huh. Jesus began to teach him he was going to die and suffer and die many things of the elders suffer many things of the elders and Peter took him to the side and and he rebuked him uh -huh. and he said far be it from thee Lord he, this shall not be to thee Oh Jesus, he was—he didn't say, "Well, Peter, <laughs> you just uh, didn't understand." He said, get, "Get thee behind me, Satan! You're an offense unto me. Mm -hmm. You don't savor the things that be of God, but the things that be of the world and earth." Yeah. Uh -huh. What happened there? Mm -hmm. Peter had really received a flash of insight, uh -huh. but it got away from him. Yeah. Uh -huh. In other words, he got closer. To the devil's terrain, see? Uh -huh. He got closer to the devil's domain, and so he forgot uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. what you'd think you'd never forget. That's Flashy right. insight like that? Uh -huh. You think you'd never forget that? Right. See, it all depends where you're dwelling. Yeah. Amen. It's amazing when you forget when you're around certain people, oh, yeah. Yeah. certain Amen. places, certain things, Amen. and you forget. Of a human agenda. That's all it takes. That's right. Uh -huh. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. You all can see that, can't you? That you can have a legitimate yeah. insight. It's legitimate. Mm -hmm. You really did have it, but then you wandered into this dark territory, uh -huh. and you you conducted yourself in stark contradiction of what you yourself said. Uh -huh. So some might say, there he was, he was lying. No, it's not, it's not that simple. That could be the case in some cases, I understand, but that's just not that simple. Yeah. You cannot hold on to the things of God uh -huh. if you're trafficking in places where God doesn't dwell. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. If you're where Jesus doesn't abide, you can't, 
you'll forget some of the great things you remembered that you you may have thought you'd never forget. And you, then you did something, you lived or you acted or you said or you spoke or something, it looked like you never did see what you said you saw. But it's because of where you were. See, now that's why when he made us to sit together in heavenly places, he fully intended for us to stay there. Amen. But if you don't stay there, and that takes, that's a good fight of faith, it's what keeps you there, see? If you don't stay there, all the good things that you knew that made such a difference to you, pretty soon they'll be forgotten. Amen. That's, that's the way it is. I, I wish I'd have known that a lot sooner than I, than I did. See, a lot of uh, Christians flirt with the forbidden. They just stay around stuff that, and people and things that yes. aren't, it's not good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they, maybe they think they're strong and they can withstand all of that, yeah. but no. P Peter was a strong man. Yeah. I have an idea if you saw Peter, he was a kind of a man's man, but mm -hmm. he got the wrong place in a maiden, a little old maiden. Made him compromise. Yes. Why? That isn't where he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew him not. I knew him not, John said, even though when he was in the womb he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just knew he was going to be made manifest to Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't going to, he wasn't going to be up in Tyre and Sidon. That's not. <laughs> That's not where it's going to be. Being yonder in Italy, Rome, that, that's not where it's going to be. It's going to be made manifest to Israel. Yeah. That's where he knew, God was going to initially mm -hmm. make the Messiah known to Israel. Peter said unto you first, mm -hmm. God having raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you and turning every one of you from iniquities. It was first, first to Israel. Yeah, amen. That's what he revealed to John, first to Israel. So John, he's preaching in the promised land, yeah. Judea. He's preaching to care where the Jews live. Because he knew, I'm going to make myself known. I'm going to make known Christ to Israel. So I'm not going to, so John, you don't want to go to Greece and uh, yeah, right. yeah. preach. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's at the right place. Peter said the word of God was sent to Israel, Acts 10.36. Paul said, of David, this man, of this man's seed, God according to his promise is raised un, unto Israel mm -hmm. a savior. Israel was was the nation whom a child would would be given and a son would be a child would be born and a son would be given. See, Israel was the one. And so God cultured a people to receive a savior mm -hmm. all through their history. They had to live 100% for him. They couldn't live for anything but him. Mm -hmm. They didn't even have like picnics. Mm -hmm. They didn't. Everything was, they didn't have like family pictures on the wall. They had scriptures on the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every, everything they did was to culture them. If you went on a feast, it was a feast that he ordained. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you rested, it was on a day he ordained. Everything. If he gave a sacrifice, it's the kind he ordained. See, everything was fixed around him. Yeah, amen. Culture them. He appears to them. Mm -hmm. And of all people, they should have snatched it up immediately. Yeah, uh -huh. But only a few. Only a few did. Then we find out that God had arranged for all Gentiles to come in also. Uh -huh. So I've come baptizing with water. That's, that's why I'm baptizing. I'm not a reformer. That's what he was saying. I'm not here to reform Israel. Even though a lot of reforming was done. They read a lot of people repented and didn't reform, but that's not that's not why he was baptizing. He was not baptizing to elevate society. He was baptizing because that's how Jesus was going to be made known. 
when he was baptized. Now that differed a lot from the Elijah of Malachi's prophecy. He was good. He was a ref, going to reform the people. The hearts of the fathers turned to the children, the children of the fathers. There's going to be a massive turnaround. But that's not why John the Baptist came. He came to prepare the way of the Lord. This necessarily infers that John knew all along that he would eventually fade into the background. But this didn't hold him back. See, for some people, this would have neutralized their effort. Yeah. Yeah. They said, well, it's just going to be for a few months, and I'm going to be out of the picture. So this would have neutralized what they did, yeah. but not John the Baptist. Yeah. He was a firebrand. Yeah. What did you go out to see, a reed shaking in the wind? Gee, yeah. he was a potent preacher. Amen. Even though he knew he only had a short time. And I can tell you, if there was a special course at a seminary and said, now this is for preachers that are only going to preach for six months. <laughs> there wouldn't be many takers. Yeah. You can't make a career out of six months unless your career is to be with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now also, this also tells me that if Jesus was going to be made known while John's baptizing, that baptism had to be unique at that time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It could not be, as some, some commentators say, that the Jews baptized proselytes. If that was in place at that time, then how would exactly that have distinguished Jesus? See, this had to be a distinguishing ordinance yeah. if God's going to make Jesus known at that time. So I don't, I don't question that in history... The Jews did practice baptism, but I don't believe they were that this time here. Because that would have confused the whole thing about Jesus being baptized. Is he a proselyte or what? Is he a Samaritan like some people said or what? Mm -hmm. Baptism had to be unique yeah. Yeah. for it to be the means in which Jesus was, what Jesus was made known. Yeah. Well, I think I'll uh, close there. I hope I didn't garble things up for you. That is a, this is a great, uh, great text of Scripture. This, I was particularly intrigued by this, the Lamb of God and the sin, take away the sin of the whole world, and how, Amen. how that was like, those are like unprecedented statements. Uh -huh. But he, uh, but the Holy Spirit, see, back behind this, if you use Holy Spirit language, Holy Spirit works works with it yes. to clarify it and Amen. make it plain. Any of you have something you'd like to add? I know that you've heard people say that John sent his disciples to Jesus because he was yeah. he was questioning. Yeah. You see, you can see here that John was faithful to the revelation that God gave That's him. Right. He was faithful. He did exactly what God showed him to do. And, and John was not wavering. That wasn't the point he he wanted his disciples to know. It's exact. See, they should they should have left with some of the other yes. disciples and here. Yes. Some yes. time had passed and yeah. they were still with him. Yeah. Some of the disciples left him and were going to yes. follow Jesus. Yeah. That was his way of getting shed That's of his right. disciples. <laughs> Amen. You know, the Lord has not left himself without a witness. And these prophets that you mentioned before were the witnesses that the Lord gave. Yeah. And so when the time came for his people to look upon the things that were happening at the present, they had these witnesses that were attesting mm -hmm. to what Amen. the Lord, the, the foundation he was laying. So the Lord gave adequate preparation for them to be able to uh, put together the things that he was doing in their time. Amen. And it's the same for us. The Lord has given us yes. adequate means to be able to track with him and see his work. Amen. Now, haven't you, which one of you have not experienced this? That in recent times, you experienced something that you know now was, in this, was revealed in Scripture that you didn't know before. And suddenly you, you actually experienced what the scripture said. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. 
That's how they can, that's how it works. This, this is what builds you up. Yeah. Amen. This is why a, a, a scriptureless, scriptureless mm -hmm. assembly handicaps the God's people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amen. It's that the continual reference to the Word of God. So when something legitimate mm -hmm. occurs in you, you're able to uh, interpret it correctly from Scripture. Yeah. Ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Remember in Paul? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Yes. Um, emphasis on the, the Passover being a, a, the deliverance from bondage. And mm -hmm. um, the blood on the doorpost that night, it wasn't, prime, it wasn't just so that they, they would spare their firstborn sons. I mean, that was part of it. But it was, whenever their firstborns were spared, they weren't spared so that they could stay in Egypt. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, Amen. And yeah. whenever people talk about the blood of Christ, you know, it's 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 good that we've been pardoned from our iniquities, uh -huh. but that's that's not the only thing. Yeah. That's, uh, we weren't spared from the punishment of our sins so we could stay in the world, so there's, there's a deliverance associated with that as well. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Yes, we are. John had already said to the people whom ye know not, mm -hmm. and now he says, I knew him not. Yeah, uh huh. And that confirms that no man knows the Son, but mm -hmm. the Father, Good. and mm -hmm. to whom soever he will reveal him. Mm -hmm. There, There's such a, a an overestimation of, of the human intellect, I guess, mm -hmm. of you know, just ha having the scriptures and we can figure it out. And mm -hmm. people, people even have sayings about that. But Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Mm -hmm. And that, that holds true in every case. Amen. 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 All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for John the Baptist, for his faithfulness for his confession and we're grateful that we're able to recognize the legitimacy of Christ Jesus we thank you for telling ahead of time the kind of savior he was going to be telling it to us through the prophets proclaiming it through the apostles so we could know that it is Christ indeed with whom we've been joined. It is in his name we pray. Amen.